Good afternoon to our next webinar. Uh, we are going to talk about backup and disaster recovery of Microsoft Exchange Server with our Jovian uh, DSS. Okay, so our agenda is for today because we want to see very quickly the results. I will show the live demo first. So as the first point, we will introduce uh, our testing environment. We will uh, show um, disaster recovery of Mac Microsoft Exchange Server uh, in under ASIX, running under ASIX. And later on, I will uh, step by step describe the theory and show some slides and talk about the best practices and so on. So we have prepared here very simple uh, setup because we want to see the results very fast. I don't want to talk about uh, this uh, more than one hour, just maybe half an hour. Uh, and uh, that's why very simple setup. So we have a Jovian running as a virtual machine on one server, which, which we are running VMware. That's the Jovian as a virtual machine, which is producing a storage here. And we have Microsoft Exchange Server next to others running, but we will focus on this one today. And of course, we have an, another one exactly the same, and we will be making backup from one to another server, and then we will simulate disaster recovery. So that's the training environment here. As I mentioned, I have a two uh, ASX servers on the first one. I'm running Jovian, which is here producing the um, storage for all these servers. So we have this iSCSI OECE, that's the uh, storage on which one uh, our exchange is running. You see, our exchange is running exactly on this volume, right? And the second one is our um, backup server. Here there is a backup Jovian running and uh, I have a GUI for both. So the 32 is my source, so the production server, and the 42 is our backup server. So on the source, we have defined the backup task. Maybe I will go to, uh, so the, our pool uh, 0, zvol 4 is our source. We run a very simple retention plan like every two minutes for last hour and every hour for last three days. Destination path is, as you see, our 42, so the another server. On another server, I'm running this on pool 0 and zvol 0, 0. And uh, that's a retention plan on the, on the backup server. So we do it three months here. We can do more description. And we have also connection to VMware because we will also showing the snapshots uh, made by uh, Windows Shadow Copy inside of the virtual machine. Uh, we will prove that we don't need it, but uh, just in case, uh, also we want to demonstrate it, uh, this functionality. If we want to change it, just edit backup task. And in the first step, we have the source. Then we have the rule. Of course, the rules can be changed. Now it was every two minutes. I can change, let's say, to every one minute. Uh, next, if I don't change, OK, I have a destination path here. This is also every two minutes maybe every three months, maybe I can put uh, for the six months, that will be the change, okay? And that's the integration with the vCenter. I, our vCenter is, is running exactly on this IP address, and when I browse, then I will see the data stores which are running on the vCenter, okay? So I have all of them, so I was selecting this OECE. Okay, next, and I do not use uh, uh, extra buffering for this. I can use it, but not this time. Okay, apply. So I was changing uh, a little the retention plan on the destination at this moment. And on the 
destination when I go to uh, I can show you that's the volume on which we are making backup this volume is not exported to the target so see under the target I see zvols number are zero and here there are zvols not attached to, to target and that's the zvol zero zero which is the under pool one and that's my backup destination in the snapshots when I open the snapshot I will see that uh, I can press end button on the keyboard and I'm jumping at once to the very last uh, very recent snapshots so now the last we see was done at the um, 4 p.m. and uh, 8 minutes past 4 p.m. right so 1608 that was the last one okay and then probably now we will be seeing the next one which is uh, just made uh, 1610 okay and in the V center, uh, okay. When I see this machine, um, don't have this auto skip. I have another one which is MS SQL, and this one I do not make snapshot. So I, I just enter this auto snap skip option. On this one, I just change auto snap skip is missing exactly. So the, the snapshots are also made in this machine. So I can go to snapshot manager and when I am snapshot manager I can see if there is any snapshot made in this uh, machine inside so at this moment there is no snapshot but we can see on um, about the history okay so it was the snapshot made at uh, 4 p.m. at 2 past 4 p.m. it was made and then removed the first line is made, the second uh, line is removed. I will maybe close it. So a snapshot created, snapshot removed. Uh, four, uh, four minutes past uh, four, created, removed. Six minutes, created, removed. Created, removed, created, removed, right? So uh, I can go to the snapshot manager one more time. And then when will be now uh, uh, 12, then we can expect that the next snapshot will be just made and we see the creating snapshot is started so when the snapshot is created we will see this exactly here this snapshot shown in the snapshot manager but this will be uh, um, existing only for the few seconds you see this snapshot is removed already uh, because um, by meantime the storage snapshot was made and we don't need this snapshot anymore so with this snapshot is just for a few seconds uh, I can go to 190 I can go to this virtual machine to this uh, um, exchange server and in exchange server I have a very simple script uh, which is uh, a writing a stamp on the disk so we will know exactly uh, at what time uh, the system was stopped or uh, snapshotted right so I can uh, I can double click on this so I will run the script and when I running the script the timestamp uh, file is created okay and when I open you will see now it's uh, 13 minutes and 19 seconds past 16 I put one more time you see it's a uh, 13 minutes 28 second and the more it's a uh, 13 minutes 36 seconds so we see it's ticking every second so we will know exactly uh, what was the last time when the ma machine was accessed so that's this timestamp is running now I will open a Firefox to access the exchange server so we have here exchange server installed we have created about thousand users and we have um, email um, creator a generator which is uh, generating randomly email emails okay so I will uh, show you the script so that's a box and then I will show you the script. I will edit this with PowerShell. I was downloading scripts from internet 
uh, here is the author of the script and this script is a mail generator and this script is a, a testing uh, exchange health and consistency. So I will run such a script to see whether exchange is consistent, just to checking, because uh, accessing the um, exchange over email, maybe I have no guarantee everything works really perfect. So this is a extra script which is checking exchange, right? I was downloading this also from the internet when you just Google, you know, test exchange server health, you will find it for sure, okay? So we are good. And then let us go to mail generator. So I will start the mail generator. So we need some traffic, right? Uh, during our snapshot is made. So now it's exactly uh, exactly 15 mm, minutes past uh, four. So uh, that will be randomly um, generating emails and um, moving or copying emails with some attachments to um, maybe almost all of users. Now it is was deciding randomly to generate 989 emails. Okay, so now you see uh, mm, it is already running and at this moment snapshot was made, right? So that's the snapshot which was made at uh, 16 minutes past 4, right? While I was running the, the generator and then now the snapshot is um, removed, okay? So at exactly 16 uh, minutes past 4 we can take the snapshot um, from the backup. I will click on the end, that's the 16 uh, minutes past um, 4, so 16, 16, very easy, I will clone it, okay, so clone, uh, 2018, maybe it's nice to have the, such a 0, 3, 28, 16, 16, right, so I will also attach to the target, the target was already defined, so I select this target, add, and now my clone of my backup volumes will be exported by, uh, to this target. And once this is exported, I can go to the vCenter. Maybe I will show you exactly uh, the target. So we'll see exactly what we have. So that's the target and that's the clone and the logical unit is zero to terabyte. Okay, so when I go to my uh, destination server to the storage adapters and the iSCSI rescan, I have a logical unit three and four. Then now I'm expecting after rescan is done uh, to uh, see the logical unit zero. Okay, that's exactly the my backup. Okay, so I can go to storage and add this as a data store. Maybe by meantime, uh, I will be uh, just uh, removing my exchange, my, my production exchange from the inventory. Maybe I will just add. Okay, we need to do new signature because the original volume is running exactly the same. So we cannot keep the same signature because will we be two exactly same volumes. So this volume will be same, but the, you know, the ID of this volume will be changed. So the VMware is doing this for us. And now it is uh, doing the signature. So uh, once this is done, by meantime, I will maybe uh, remove my machine. So I will shut down my, my exchange. Okay, so now I'm uh, simulating kind of, you know, disaster because my machine will be shut down and will be disappearing. So I will be also removing this machine from the inventory. So I will have exactly identical machine uh, started after from the clone. Right. So the machine is already shut down. So I go remove the, from the inv inventory. Okay. And then I can go here to configuration and to our. OK, 
Okay, now it's a trick when you have a lot of machines here, go to search uh, virtual machines, search now. So now I will be searching virtual machines, sort them. So that's my Windows 2012, but uh, Exchange is 2016. Okay, that's why this name. I will start this machine on my second server. Okay, so that's the Exchange. Uh, now I will power on. Okay, when the exchange is powered on, um, I select move, I move it means it will not change the MAC address, it will be keeping original MAC address. So now the exchange is starting. It will take um, at least four or five minutes to, to start everything. So I will start the timer now and I can to not waste the time. Uh, I will be moving to our uh, presentation. Next slide, uh, which I want to talk today. Uh, it is, uh, everybody knows, uh, so I don't need to talk about it a lot. It is a danger if we have a problem with losing data. So data can be lost on any possible um, way. So you never know what, what's going on what can happen. Uh, this is a dangerous because some studies say that even companies get bankrupted after losing the data. So it's a serious topic. Uh, but backups are not so easy, especially when you have, you know, heavy duty and a lot of machines and uh, complicated virtualization and so on. So this can be complicated, this can be expensive, you know, and can be also hard to restore. Uh, backups, you know, you can do on public uh, cloud, but, you know, there is uh, plenty advantages, but there is also plenty disadvantages. We have not enough time to discuss every uh, single topic here. The worst case is, of course, not backup at all. And from our experience, there are such a cases. And, uh, and uh, thanks to our solution, we can very easily fix the problem. So that's the solution. Uh, which we uh, want to discuss. So all on offsite data protection means we have production server and we have a backup server. So it's kind of native storage backup. You know, you don't need any application to run these backups, right? So we have a Jovian uh, production server. So everything uh, to be backup need to be stored on the Jovian, of course. Uh, so uh, we make the snapshots, which are for free. We can make unlimited number of snapshots. We have customers even which are reaching almost million snapshots in production. Uh, and the delta between snapshots, which is also explicitly known, the, there is no search for this delta. This delta is known uh, at the time when we do the replication. It will be, you know, step by step delta by delta put on top on the destination volume. You can have one, two or three or more destination volumes. In our production, in our office, we are using for iSCSI three destination volumes and for the NAS we are using two backup volumes, two destinations, right? So um, we have our uh, he has shown uh, this, uh, how this retention works, but I have also the, the web on the web in the open Ijovian retention plans. We can show uh, how it works. So you have a uh, different speeds. You can very fast uh, emulate the snapshot and now 10 minutes is uh, equal to one second. So we see that the, in the last hour we have, uh, in this case, every five minutes snapshots. In the last three days, we have every hour snapshots. That's the green one. And in last month, we have every day, right? So here we see um, that these every five minute snapshots, which are created uh, after one hour, only some of them will be staying. So only every hour snapshot will be staying. The rest of them, they are removed. So the finally, when, you, when I have the recent time, recent uh, period in time, I have very frequent access to the data. And then after uh, 
one hour I, ha I have just actually after one hour I have just every hour on data versions right and after three days I have just every day of course I can do much more frequently if there is a need for this right so I coming back to the uh, presentation when we talk about backup that is also recovery point objective and recovery time objective okay that's that's um, my reminder that we can come back to the um, exchange. So in this case, uh, we know that the you know uh, two minutes, or even one minute or five minutes, it's a time uh, when our data are fresh, and it's very, uh, very quick to restore. So that was few minutes. I was restoring this, and now let us come back. Uh, this. Uh, machine is up and running so I can just go to console it's same IP because uh, I was doing same MAC address after starting when we go inside we will see the message that the machine was not shut down properly because it's a snapshot so uh, I just cancel this and then first thing I'm curious is from which time I have this uh, um, data so that because I was running this data stamp so now you see it was 16 minutes by uh, 4 p.m. and then 15 seconds so that's I will maybe copy this to not to remember okay I copy this maybe I save somewhere maybe under notepad okay so I will that's my time, okay, which I have the, the machine was, uh, uh, that was the, the moment when the snapshot was taken in the storage. So 15 seconds after uh, 16 uh, past 4 p.m. Okay, that was, I wanted to, to check first. And now when I go to, uh, maybe I will go to Firefox to open the, exchange still opening this okay that's my exchange and you see it is showing me just 500 but when I see get all result then I see in total I have 1,003 mailboxes, right, in my system. Uh, some of them I was creating uh, manually and uh, most of them, of course, uh, by the script. Here it's uh, my uh, mailboxes. Okay, so everything is up and running. And I can go to script, which I can uh, check Okay, that's the start mail generator and here I can go to test. Okay, so you see I have a test here and I have a start mail generator here. So let us test first, maybe I will run the test. So it's initializing. It will be testing the um, exchange database right now, as we have uh, um, run this originally on the source. So we need to wait a little until connection is done, okay. Server version exchange 2016. Okay, everything is done. Uh, so we are in a position to start already um, 
running production on our disaster recovery uh, server. So it need to prepare. Uh, there is uh, is checking the accounts because there is thousand accounts. It, this script uh, takes a uh, few seconds until it's starting. Uh, when I was uh, running this with a uh, lower user uh, users, uh, then it was uh, of course starting much faster. But okay, we need to to test it. Really, we need quite big database. That's why we have created thousand users. Good, so now it will be sending randomly 993 uh, emails, some of them with attachments. Okay, you see he is checking uh, um, random users and is attaching some documents and so on. So we run our production just uh, with explanation, <laughs> uh, just maybe um, even not 50, 15 minutes after, with explanation. If I will not explain but just right that will be maybe maximum maybe eight uh, minutes or five minutes uh, when I'm fast uh, I can have uh, everything up and running with a very fresh uh, data okay so that was the presentation of the of the machine without snapshot um, without snapshot which is a windows shadow uh, copy snapshot right so as you see in this machine i have a snapshot inside so you can uh, you can just uh, you know go uh, to snapshot and revert this snapshot or you can go to the manager and just snapshot manager and you can say go to you see, so that's the snapshot which was taken 16 minutes uh, past 4 p.m. So I say go to, so this machine will be um, power off and will be uh, coming back to the situation from this uh, window shadow copy snapshot. Exactly. So when I start this machine now, so I can expect that the uh, our timestamp will be will be a bit younger right because uh, the sequence was that we were we were starting uh, first the snapshot in the um, virtual machines and after removing after um, after snapshot in machine uh, virtual machine was created then of course we make a, a storage snapshot and once storage snapshot is created, it's send, sending signal to remove the snapshot from the virtual machine inside. But the snapshot on the storage has already state uh, that this uh, virtual machine snapshot, the private snapshot, is already inside. Right? So this is the case, uh, what we have now. Now I will also maybe start the timer for the few minutes because I need to wait until exchange is booted. So we will continue our presentation. So uh, finally, we can say that uh, our uh, backup, uh, you know, uh, is uh, kind of all, all in one storage um, and native backup because the storage and backup, this is um, kind of, you know, same uh, application, right? The storage is making snapshot periodically and it's moving the deltas to another location, to exactly the same um, kind of volume. Uh, you, uh, we are backing up everything because here we had a Windows with the exchange and with user data. So everything what is running on, on top on this storage is due to backup. That's perfect because the restore you have seen we just need to add the clone or maybe if i will uh, put the latest volume that will be almost the same to the data store and uh, add machine to the inventory and boot it wait, wait until it's booted and uh, run production so there is no backup window because backup is run the clock right uh, and the protection against uh, ransomware because we have all versions so we can easily come back to the version before server was infected. When we have NAS with SMB, then every user will have access to 
versions by himself without asking administrator for help. This is described in the uh, in the jump start or the quick start, and it's also a webinar showing how to use it. Uh, what is nice about our um, backup solution? It is a very light backup engine. It means uh, there is no really a load generated because of this backup is running. So around the clock running, running this backup, nobody should, um, man, uh, should be in a position to find that there is something running slow. Uh, we can also optionally remove uh, on the periodical, um, uh, periodically the destination media and replace them with the new one. So we can ship the media to another locations. Transport of this um, backup is encrypted always. In the summary, so we can say that's easy to use because uh, I don't need any backup application. I just run a storage which is backing uh, itself. It can very easy scale if I have one machine or, or, or 100 machines or 1,000 machines. I'm backing up the whole volume so that the backup will be working same way if it's, it's one machine or 100 virtual machines. Uh, it's instant disaster recovery. We have seen that just few clicks and few minutes. So this is a very nice option to provide, uh, you know, business continuity in case of some uh, disasters. And with high availability cluster, we can make this, you know, high av available and uh, disaster uh, recovery uh, um, ready. Uh, we want to just remind you that you don't need to uh, mix high availability and uh, offsite data protection because high availability is just a HA cluster which will fail over uh, from one server to another server and then transparently fail over, uh, uh, automatically fail over. So we'll be keeping running once uh, one machine has a problem, but uh, this is not protecting uh, data fully because uh, data need to be in another server or in another location. Uh, because of many reasons, you know, the, you know, imagine your edge cl cluster is just stolen, right? Uh, so you need the data in another building. Okay, so, but we cover both. So it's kind of all in one. It's a data protection and HA cluster. Okay, I will just go through all options we have. So very simple option, just a single server, no really backup replication, but just snapshot running uh, without the backup. So there is no destination here. So we still uh, have uh, three uh, different, uh, uh, you know, problems covered, right? When I have a next slide, just uh, uh, our production pool and uh, backup pool. So you see, I cover one more thing that maybe, um, you know, the rate uh, on the um, production pool is uh, corrupted or something, a problem, or too many disks dead, you, you have a backup again with the same server. Okay, so uh, that's nothing, uh, you know, special, but better than this one, right? So that's the next step better. Now, uh, next step better, you can have a local backup and you have another server with the backup pool. So we cover, cover one more, uh, you know, failure. Uh, next, uh, we have a production pool, backup pool in the same server. This is, of course, optional. We have another um, backup in the local arena network and we have a server in another location, right? So we cover everything except downtime. So for this one, we can have a HA cluster. So that's the HA cluster with transparent failover. And it's protecting the data to another local server and it's protecting data to another location at the same time. Uh, of course, on another location and um, the backup server can be HA cluster as well. So you can have a production HA cluster and your backup uh, destinations can be HA cluster as well. So the, it works, right? So you can have a two data center when you have one 
server running production and on another side you have a, a disaster recovery and another server active on a second data center and it's having disaster recovery in the first data center. So th that's also possible uh, configuration, right? So we, you can configure this uh, Jovian as in our case running as a virtual machine, not as a physical machine, but the virtual machine. So you can save a lot of boxes here. Okay, and that's the uh, feature overview. But by meantime, I need to go back and show now our uh, machine so I can connect to console again. And this time machine was started uh, and the same it was showing that it was not powered properly even I was st starting from the uh, VSS snapshot. That same procedure. Now we are queries about the timestamp. Okay, so we go to the last record and we can record that it was nine second. So we can compare it. Okay, so now when I compare it, so you see the VSS snapshot was, so this was a VSS and it was just just storage, right? So it was storage was 16 sec, um, uh, the um, 15 seconds, and uh, VSS was earlier, so it's a bit older, right? So it was nine seconds after 4 p.m., and this one is more fresh, right? Both are working. G this is just we want to prove it. Okay, so when I will be starting. Firefox, I will try to log in to Exchange Server. So it's it's trying to log in, okay. Same procedure as the last time. I have it, okay, it shows me 500, but when I say get all the results, it will be showing me all the, all the 1003 boxes. And when I go, uh, log into one of the users, I see exactly the same stuff, okay? And maybe we can run the consistency check script. Okay, so that's the one and here, So now I have both scripts. So that's my consistency check script. Let us run one more time. As expected, Everything is passing. Everything is passing successfully and now we can start running production and the sending, receiving emails already. Okay, so uh, that was the now uh, the backup um, uh, with the revert to the private snapshot of the virtual machine which was uh, you know quizzing the disks for the exchange but as we see there is no difference whether we run it or, or we do not run it so the storage uh, backup is um, also having consistent state of the exchange server right which is actually exchange server is one of the most sensitive uh, databases. Uh, in the mm, you know webinar made maybe months ago or last year it was uh, with MS SQL and these also we are presenting on every uh, training uh, so it was tested you know hundreds of time 
and uh, we even we didn't see even one time that it was failing right okay so that is the exchange uh, I will be now powering off I don't need this machine anymore because this was demo and then I can remove from inventory I will be coming back so now I am unmounting I will be uh, maybe deleting this clone okay I'm deleting this clone then after deleting this clone this volume will disappear and then I can come back to my original machine and then search for the virtual machines search now and uh, finding my exchange uh, server uh, template I will be adding back to the inventory and starting the original machine again then we will see after adding this that during it is booting it will be skipping some okay let us boot it now so that's my original machine it was started but now every uh, every two minutes uh, we will have the uh, request for this machine to start the snapshot when the machine is booting you we will see uh, you know quizzing error because it's not um, started yet uh, the window shadow copy service may be not started yet or if you see all the time quizzing error means um, the yeah the shadow uh, copy services or volume services are not started so you need to start everything if the services inside the Microsoft Windows right so that is I was uh, making the disaster recovery the original machine is starting so we are done with the demo uh, that's the uh, all the feature set which we are showing every time that we address here data integrity data protection data availability uh, virtualizing data, accelerating data, optimizing data and we access now the new is that uh, the fiber channel just in QA so it will be available uh, very soon on our web as an official version okay that was about all uh, for today let us see if the if we have any questions uh, you wanted a snapshot right how do you make restore permanent okay uh, if this was uh, we were mounting the snapshot the clone uh, if uh, I can use let's say vCenter uh, in case of moving data back to another so storage uh, motion to another volume or I can uh, use when I see the snapshot is working well and I, I lost my source volume then I can run uh, the, op the option from the GUI which is I will show you uh, I can go to snapshots I can run this uh, rollback but in this case uh, the, the my um, backup volume which is here so that's my backup volume which after a snapshot completed it has a state of the last snapshot so at this moment I, I, I can explain you at this exact moment when I go to end the last snapshot was made at 1648 so at this moment uh, this uh, original volume has exactly this state so if I will stop the source I will be not every two minutes adding new delta so I could mount this volume as my new original volume and add all virtual machines to inventory that's it another case when I still continue a snapshot it's not the full disaster recovery but just disaster recovery of one single machine or just few of them 
then I run a clone and then uh, from the clone I can start this as this um, data store which was uh, um, uh, with the new uh, signature and then I can move later on the machine to another data stores with storage motion and another option is when I know that I, uh, I, I have no source anymore and I need not the latest data status like, like let's say I don't need very latest status but I need the status from 1630 then I can just roll back this volume so uh, my backup volume will become to uh, having as a last state um, 1630 and then I can add it to the inventory and all the machines which uh, were inside will have a, a status from the 1630 and because I was selecting this one the the 10 newer snapshots will be removed right so the, the snapshots which are newer than 1630 will be disappearing and I will have only access to the older snapshots right so that's the uh, how it works so I hope it is answering your questions so thank you very much for today and I hope you see you on the next webinar.